How's it going, YouTube? Uh, right, we're back again and we're going to have a look at a thermal camera today. Uh, but not just any thermal camera. Uh, these ones are your normal, everyday thermal cameras that people use in the industry. It's like a big clunky kind of thing. If that's what you want, you may choose to use this type. These are a bit more rugged, uh, but obviously they're a lot more bulkier. Uh, there's another type we've been looking at lately. Uh, these are ones like this that plug into your mobile phone and it makes it obviously a lot more compact. Uh, these plug in directly to the bottom of your phone and then use the screen from your phone as the screen for the thermal image camera. Uh, these usually are either iPhone or Android. Uh, depending on which one you want, you buy the one that you need. Uh, this particular one is Android. But the one we're looking at today is slightly different. Uh, this one's the Hick Micro Mini 2 version 2 thermal imager. Uh, one of the super tiny ones again that fits onto the bottom of your phone. Uh, this one is for iPhone and Android and you can use this on either one which is really good because if you're changing between devices this will suit whatever you're using. So you can fit it on an iPad if you wanted a bigger screen and then put it on your Android phone if that's what you're using and just move it between devices depending on the application you want and what you're wanting to use at that time. This is the latest version of this, the version 2, which has just come out. Uh, so I think what we need to do is let's get this out on the bench. Let's have a look, see what you get in it. Let's plug it into a phone and get it set up on the app. And let's go through it and see what it can do. And let, let's find something that we can use it on uh, to show some applications. Right, so here we are on the bench. This is the Hikmicro Mini 2 V2 Thermal Imager. Uh, as we can see down here, this is for the iPhone and the Android. Usual bump on the box, telling you a few specs of the thing, but we'll go through those in a minute uh, once we've got it unboxed. So I think the first thing we need to do is let's get this out of the box and have a look, see what you actually get. Uh, first thing we see uh, is the usual quick start guide and manual, and we've got a little thank you card there as well. And this gives us some support details on the back should we need them. Uh, next thing in the box is the camera itself that looks like it's in a snazzy little case. So if we open that up, uh, inside uh, we can see the box is quite unnecessarily large. The camera is actually really tiny. Uh, if we compare that to this top don one, uh, the box on the top don is quite a bit smaller. Uh, but looking at the camera itself, uh, we can see there a bit of a size difference. Uh, the Hick Micro one is probably less than half the size of it, so it's quite substantially smaller than that one. So if you don't need to keep this in the case, uh, this is super tiny. Uh, we've got a little adapter here. Uh, this is USB-C uh, to Lightning. Uh, so if you're using a older iPhone, uh, you've got a Lightning connection there. Uh, so this adapter plugs into the bottom of the camera uh, and then you can plug that into your Lightning connection there. Uh, the newer iPhones are USB-C, so you, they plug straight in. Uh, we've got another little adapter here. Uh, this is like a little extension. Uh, so if you've got a case or something like that on your phone, uh, you can plug this extension into the camera and this just extends the camera away from your phone. Also in the case, uh, we've got a little uh, USB extension cable there. Uh, these can be super useful uh, because then you can plug that end into the camera, uh, this end into your phone, tablet, whatever, and then this bit, you can hold it and move it and get it into some really tight little spaces depending on what you're wanting to see. So if you're looking at something in, say, an engine bay or something like that, you've not got a lot of room. Uh, you're literally on the end of this cable and you can get that to reach wherever you want it to reach to in some really tight spaces. That's a good idea to have this cable. Right, so this camera is a 256 by 192 IR resolution, uh, which is pretty standard for cameras in these sort of price ranges, which is plenty enough for what we needed to do. Uh, we've got a 50 degree wide angle lens, uh, no battery is needed. This is self powered from the phone or tablet or whatever you're plugging it into. Uh, these can measure temperature differences as small as 0.04 centigrade uh, with an accuracy of plus or minus two degrees centigrade or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 2%, whichever is greater. 
by adjusting the object's emissivity and distance, you can achieve professional grade operation and enhance the accuracy of the temperature readings. Uh, so if you really know what you're doing with the settings, you can get this to be really sort of professional grade accuracy. Uh, the power requirements of this are of 0.36 watt, so it won't quickly run out your phone or tablet. It's super lightweight, 0.71 ounce or 20 grams, uh, so you don't even know you've got it on the phone and comes with a three year warranty for the entire device and a 10 year warranty for the sensor. And the main difference between this V2 version and the V1 version is we've got a greater temperature range. So this will measure temperatures between minus 20 uh, degrees centigrade uh, to 400 degrees centigrade or minus four Fahrenheit to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think what we should do now is let's get this plugged into the phone. Uh, let's download the app. Let's get it working and see what it's like. Uh, so right, so if we have a look on the App Store, I'm assuming the Play Store is exactly the same. Uh, you've got Hick Micro Viewer there. You can see I've downloaded it. Uh, this is what we need to actually make it work. Uh, you can see there, I've had this plugged in before. Uh, device disconnected, it actually auto detects the first time you plug this in. Uh, we have there, look, got a device upgrade as well. So there's a firmware upgrade out for this now. So if I click on that, uh, let's download the upgrade package. Uh, we'll give that a second to download. So to upgrade it, we need to connect the device. So if I take this and plug it in, as you can see there now, it's transmitting it to the device. So it's upgrading the firmware. So the first thing we'll do is get that updated and then I'll start a screen record on this and let's go through a few things and just see what it does. Right, so to test this out, uh, like before, well, what I like doing actually is holding the phone upside down so the camera's at the top. You will notice everything flicks around depending on which time, uh, which way you're holding it. Uh, we was gonna use the cat. One's disappeared, uh, let's use this one. Right, so we'll use this cat. Uh, we'll go and try something else out in a little bit, but we'll use the cat just to go through a few of the features and settings on this camera. So if I record the screen, what you'll notice is this is reading three temperatures uh, and on the screen there's three little crosses that are jumping around apart from one which is the center one uh, if we have a look at the top left what that says is maximum temperature minimum temperature then center temperature so what that does is any time two of them are jumping around the screen uh, one of them is showing your minimum temperature and the other one is showing your maximum temperature at any uh, whatever's on the screen at that particular time uh, we can see there on the bed over there where the other cat was sat uh, we've still got a bit of a warm patch showing uh, you can change these at any time by down at the bottom left uh, we've got the measurement if we click on that uh, you can turn these on and off so you can literally turn any ones you don't want off. So there you can see we've just got the center one now. Uh, if we turn them all off, say, and then go to a point, uh, what we can do is click any point on the screen and it'll measure that temperature there. As you can see, it's 24.7 degrees centigrade. If we slide across, we've got a few different options we can do as well. Clear that point first by the far right hand side. And then as you can see, we've got a line there. Uh, it's reading it upside down, but it says draw a line on the image and it will measure the temperature along that line. So as you can see there along that line, it's picking the three points. So we've got the maximum temperature, the minimum temperature, and the average temperature across the whole line. Uh, so if you're wanting to read something very specific, uh, that's what you can do because you can also set this up on say a tripod or something, uh, and leave it monitoring and recording uh, over a period of time. Uh, the next one along is a rectangle. So we can do a similar thing with that rectangle. And what it'll do is it'll only measure the temperatures within that rectangle there. So if there's a load of the view uh, you want to ignore, um, it's different when you're holding it handheld like this because you can point it where you want. Uh, but if you're doing any recording over a period of time, uh, that's a good thing to do because there might only be one particular spot that you actually want interested in measuring the temperatures from and that's how you can do it with that rectangle uh, the next one along is palettes um, so depending on what you're wanting to look at and how you're wanting to look at it uh, you've got many different palettes uh, that you can show on the screen to highlight exactly what you want to see the ice one is a good one because this really highlights your hot points uh, like there look, looking at the cat 
uh, and then if we slide right over to the left hand side you can see you've got a custom one there uh, so you can set up the colors as you wish uh, the next one along is image and this is literally just changing how everything looks within the brightness and the contrast and things like that uh, lastly is the perimeter uh, this has got the emissivity and the distance and things like that uh, so you can set a distance of what you're actually measuring and the emissivity uh, so you can really fine tune how it's reading to get a really accurate temperature measurement uh, it's got a high and a low temperature range uh, just to help you narrow it down a little bit more and then you can change other things like your temperature unit we've got celsius i'm in the uk uh, but you can have fahrenheit and kelvin and things like that as well depending on what you're wanting to read uh, the last one is a high temperature alarm say you're doing an inspection on electrical panels and you want to set an alarm uh, so if you've got anything above a certain temperature it instantly alarms you so you don't have to pay too much attention to it you're just literally flicking around looking at everything uh, you can set up a high temperature alarm there or a low temperature alarm depending on uh, what you're checking and then it will notify you when anything appears within the screen uh, outside of that temperature setting that you've set it at. Uh, down at the bottom uh, you can switch between photos and video uh, so you can take either photos or video of whatever you're looking at uh, which is always a good thing so if you're ghost hunting and things like that you want to take a video of that don't you and then bottom left obviously uh, that recalls any photos or videos uh, that you've taken uh, and i believe they will be saved into your photo album as well right so if i hold the phone the right way up for a second just because i want to show you this one uh, you've got the super ir there which gives you a really nice clear image i don't know why anybody wants to turn that one off uh, the next one along is picture in picture uh, so that gives you a nice picture from your normal camera of your phone uh, that you can also move around to wherever you want and when you're recording it will record that as well so you've actually got a video of what you're looking at as well as the infrared image uh, there's lots of other little things you can do with this like you can manually uh, put the minimum and maximum temperature in to really fine tune uh, what you're wanting to look at um, i tend to leave those in auto normally uh, let's stop looking at the cat uh, and let's just show you a practical application of using this camera right so this is my kitchen floor uh, this is actually a heated floor uh, if we look at the floor in now uh, there's absolutely nothing on there's my foot to show you that we are looking at the floor in you can see how the temperature range changes automatically uh, as my foot goes in and out of view uh, but what we want to do is you could have a problem with this heating uh, these these have a heated cable that runs up and down uh, or the other way i don't know we'll find out in a minute uh, and what can happen is that can break at any point you'll have to rip up your entire floor in to find out what exactly where the break is uh, but using the thermal camera uh, what we can do is if i turn the heating on you'll see where it heats up to and then if you was a break you could follow that to the exact point where the break is and then just lift the one tile that you need to lift to repair that heating let me manually adjust this heating to turn it on uh, so if we give this a little bit of time to start warming up uh, we will start seeing the heating coming up uh, so what i'll do is let's screen record this again so you can see what i'm looking at and there actually already uh, we can see the heating that's coming up already you can see where it's already getting warm and i'm starting to feel it on my feet actually uh, we've got a bit of a dark patch there uh, because obviously there's a rug underneath uh, if i can move that you can see where the heating coils are under the floor right now right so as you can see if i stand back so we can see the whole floor uh, and then if we look around the floor uh, there's some warm patches over there because that's my footprints where i was stood uh, but you can actually follow the floor heating there you can see where it's coming from over in that far corner that's where the power's coming in uh, and then it coils round it goes round everything else under those mats over there whoever put this down did a bit of a rough job there look right near the cat's bowls uh, this is a good example of a practical use of these cameras that makes them super useful and this particular one is really not that expensive at all uh, the Fleur camera that i've also got in the garage was over 10 times more expensive than this particular one
And there's a practical use for these cameras. This floor to my feet hardly even feels warm at the minute. I can hardly even feel the heating, uh, but we can see it really well using the camera. Right, so that was a look at this Hick Micro camera. Uh, these are super useful little things. And like I said, this particular one is really not that expensive at all uh, compared to a lot of the other cameras. So what I'll do is I'll put some links down below where you can check out this for yourself. Uh, these have got loads of uses uh, for the average home user as well as the professionals. I use these in a professional capacity uh, as well as at home for various things. Uh, what I need to do one day is I need to do a video on all the uses uh, that you can use these for as a home user. Uh, so check out this camera for yourself. Uh, comment below anything you want to comment. I do like reading your comments. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see some more random things like tech, uh, camper van, uh, e-bikes and car radios and all that sort of stuff that I personally find interesting. I, I like doing videos on all the stuff I find interesting. Uh, so subscribe if you want to see more of that. And like the video if you liked it and I will catch you again in another video. Cheers.